24th of January 1945, Sydney, Australia. World War II is approaching its end. A suburban electric train is heading from Liverpool Station via Granville towards either one of the city stations, either Wynyard or St James. This train is mostly composed of standard suburban carriage stock, however there are some Bradfield carriage stock in it. The train was approaching Maryland Station, when all of a sudden there's a loud BANG. Afterwards, all hell breaks loose. The first carriage derails and swings around down an embankment. It rips in three other carriages. The first car had been scraping along the embankment for 36 meters. Because of this, it tore up both rail lines. The driver, John Baldock, and 12 passengers were seriously injured. The New South Wales Government Railway predicted the cost of this crash to be £8,000. Counting for inflation, that's £347,555. If you were to translate that into the Australian dollar today, it turns out to be $619,066. Yikes. Add on World War II, and it turns into a very expensive accident. Investigators find something chilling, a 7-inch bolt lying on the tracks. This bolt couldn't be from the tracks, nor could they be from the train. It wouldn't just be lying around. So who, or what, put it there? It would be impossible for an animal to carry it, and so would a heavy gust of wind. It had to be human. What kind of person would place down a huge bolt on a railway line? It was put on at a quote, unauthorised level crossing. The bolt was likely taken from the local metal dumps. I think we all know that trend that kids have of putting things such as low value coins and other small pieces of metal on train tracks to watch it get flattened by trains. This idiotic game of chicken had caused this. Some kid would have likely wanted to one up another one's item by placing down the bolt. Sadly the suspect has not been found and would possibly have died of old age by now. Rail replacement buses would be set up from the line from Granville to Cabramatta, and trains would use the Lidcombe Car Cabramatta line instead. The derailed and damaged cars would likely be scrapped, following more introduction to service of things such as the Tullock single decker stock and the Coming Sputnik EMUs. There was not a high demand for passenger trains in the wartime, and the world would have to undergo a large rebuild after it. All Bradfield carriages would be withdrawn by 1975, and the standard carriages would be withdrawn in 1992. While most of the Bradfield cars would be scrapped, there were a few scattered throughout New South Wales, some at a location that I have gone to, but can't say the name of, and one at Felmere. As for the standard suburban stock, some are in preservation, some have been scrapped, and thousands of them just lying around all over the country, being converted into homes. Some towns like Lightning Ridge have even become semi-famous for it. 76 years on, and there have been tons of other accidents caused by sabotage, thousands occurring just days as part of the war effort. On the 6th of July 2020, a car crashed onto the tracks at Maryland before being hit by a train killing the car driver. In 1987, a very similar train crash happened at Springwood on the 29th of September. Only two people were injured, luckily, and only lightly. That same day, a minor crash happened at Helensburg.